Good morning, Matt from The Departure Brief here, your go-to channel for epic global adventures on a small budget. Today I'm in Seoul and I'm going to show you what you should do if you only have one day in Seoul. It's 10 minutes to 10 in the morning and we're starting in the Jongno region at this coffee shop over my shoulder. You can get top quality hand poured and hand brewed coffee right here. I love it. What's so good about the itinerary that I've pulled together for us today is that we are strictly on foot. You will not see us catching a train. That makes it so much more easy. Although the train network here is one of the best in the world and I think you should experience it. We will just be on foot today. Got the coffee and now we're off to one of the most iconic palaces in the whole of South Korea. This is stop number one, a palace that I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of. But get this, it was built in 1395 and is the largest and most traditional and probably the most historic palace in the whole of South Korea. Let's go and take a look. Very affordable to come, it only costs 3,000 won to enter if you're really interested in all the palaces in South Korea you can get like a big four package for 10,000 won 1395 it was built insane let's go inside It should be known that the complex itself here is absolutely massive. You're gonna need at least an hour to walk around, get your selfies and learn about the history of the place. There is buildings and walls and so many things that you can see. It's a really cool palace, definitely add it to your itinerary. Okay, that was bloody epic. Well worth the 3,001 and most of my morning. Now we're on to stop number two. Now we're in Bukchong Hanok village, famous for offering a glimpse into Korea's traditional past with its narrow, well-preserved, small alleyways. It's free to come here and something you should definitely check out. It kind of feels like Treasury Hill Artist Village in Taipei where all the old traditional <laughs> houses and buildings have become new boutique shops. If you like boutique shopping and wandering through old streets, this is definitely a spot you need to add to your list. Next stop is the Guangzhou Street Market for lunch. It's one of the oldest markets in Seoul, operating since 1905. Lots of delicious street food options. For lunch, I've gone for the traditional Korean topoki and some Korean dumplings. All for 10,000 won, very affordable. <laughs> Lunch was delicious. This market is very bustling. Um, heaps of street food options, heaps of snacks, meals, street food, even little restaurants, and heaps of other like actual shops that you can go to. This market is quite busy. It's really oh. big. Definitely one that you should add to your list in Seoul. The final stop, if you only have one day in Seoul, is to complete the Seoul City Walls Trail. This wall kept enemies at bay for over 500 years back in the day, and it's a great way to not only see more of Seoul, but also get in touch with the history of the place. Up here, you'll find a lot of vintage shops and sort of upmarket cafes slash bakeries. It'll be a great spot to look out over Seoul. So there you have it, four essential things you need to do when you visit Seoul, especially for the first time. Let me tell you this though, one day is definitely not enough if you're planning your trip. You need at least three, four, mate. You could go anywhere up to 10 days here and not get bored. But 
back to today. We only spent 3,000 won on one entrance ticket and we got to see so much of Seoul. It's a great place for budget traveling, although accommodation can be pricey. If you are in the midst of planning a trip to South Korea, Seoul deserves more than one day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I truly appreciate each and every member of my adventure tribe. By subscribing to this channel, you're helping me do what I love and that's helped you travel the world. Until next time, have a great day.